Hello, everybody. So I'm Dan, and I work at Buzz Bingo. So I'm the L&D manager, um, manage quite a small team, um, and what we basically do is we select third-party people to help us um, when we hit projects and requirements that the team can't do because either we've not got a skill set within the team or if we are too busy because we've got too many projects on. Joan was one of those um, third-party suppliers that came and helped us along with Think Biscuit, so Michael as well. Um, when we decided to A, move our LMS system, but B, then apply for the award to do it. So the idea, what we're going to do today, is we're going to walk you through how we did it, what we did, why we think we won, um, and kind of any USPs and any tips and advice. Is that good for everyone? Fab. So just to give you a bit of information, well, this is the first time that we applied for an award with the Learning Tech, and um, we applied for two awards um, because there's two parts to this project. So the part that won is a new LMS system, which was our Calidus Learn. I don't know if anyone uses Calidus. No, so we had it as a classic system, which is desktop only, and we needed to move it to a mobile responsive system, and that's where Learn comes in. So Learn allows you to do it on a mobile, tablet, etc., etc. The first part of the project was about being able to speak to our colleagues. We've got 3,000 colleagues across 91 venues in the, in, the, in the UK and Scotland. So we can't talk to every colleague in every site. And we normally what we do is rely on our managers. And then you get this sticky middle where you've got good people managers, where that team is very engaged from a people level. And then you've got good process and um, profit managers where that team might be not, not as well engaged. So sometimes our messages didn't get through to everybody within the business. If I give you an example, our CEO had been in the business two years went round every single club within those two years and got to one club and they didn't even know he was our CEO. Even though we'd been talking about it and putting videos out, putting um, newspaper articles out, et cetera, et cetera. So that's where we were losing traction with certain places. So we knew that we needed an app that allowed us to communicate with our colleagues and them to communicate up. So that's the first part. The second part is LMS. Do you want to add anything, Jane, at that point? Yeah, I think um, one of the things when I noticed when I first joined, we went, Michael and I went along to meet Dan in a club, and we hadn't realised as a bingo club there was all this extra stuff going on, like there was kitchens serving food, so there was quite a lot of health and safety training needed, you know, working top fat fryers and all sorts of things like that. But they, there was, sorry, it's a pun, there was a bit of a buzz <laughs> in, the, in the room, and also what you'll notice right away in the presentation, this is the style, it is fun. Um, and the staff in their induction get invited to play bingo and, and do all sorts of stuff and, and there's a real family atmosphere. Um, of course what Dan hadn't appreciated was that Covid was about to hit everybody and shut everything down but more about that later. Yeah, so Joan's correct there. So for me my biggest tip to you is be true to who you are and the organisation you are because that's what you're trying to get through to everybody. You're trying to take everyone on a journey of what people live and breathe every day. So that chaos on that slide, that's, that's our business, that's what we do, that's our people and we couldn't do it without our people. And every single person in Buzz is an entertainer at heart, whether they are a full out entertainer or it's hidden and they're a bit shy, it's fine, it comes out eventually. And that's basically what we, tr we took everybody through. So the journey that we took was being true to ourselves and really taking the judges on a journey and immersing them in who we are and what we do, um, which is a riot really, to be fair. This is your judge's presentation, isn't it? Yeah, so, th so there's two parts. So you, your first part is your a nomination or your award submission. And um, what I'd say there is don't give them everything because what you actually want them to do is have lots of questions and be excited and, and want to know more because that's your first ticket into the next round, really, for me, is use that to really tease them. Because if they don't want to watch the next episode, then, then you're not going to get through in essence. So that, that's kind of where it was. Um, we also, we were very creative because there's word counts. So there's not, word, there's not word counts on images with words on. So there's a tip. And there's not word counts on videos. But there is a time limit on videos. I think it's five minutes. Is that correct? I think it is. So, For Q&A? Uh, no, within the within the submission, you can do videos and stuff like that. So use them to your advantage. Don't just think that your presentation needs to be words on a page. It can be anything you want it to be. So 
So we kind of like, this is our, present, this is our award submission after, so this is our presentation. So we've already given you the teaser and we're just taking you through. So um, we took you a bit on a journey. Let's recap that and take that away. You can see the wordings that we use and how we speak. That's, that's literally how we communicate, and communicate in our business. Our colleagues, we talk to our colleagues all the same, whether you're a cleaner in a club or whether you're the CEO. You, we speak the same language, we talk the same language. Uh, one of the biggest pieces that we wanted to do was obviously move to an omnichannel world. So omnichannel, if, no, if people don't know what that is, is basically a seamless experience whether you are delivering a product online or in person. So we have 91 clubs that deliver bingo and there's an on-person piece where they're talking to colleagues, but we also have an online platform that delivers bingo. So what we need to do as a business is make sure that everything we deliver is seamless across there. So you can be sat in your front room and feel like you're in a club, or you can be in a club and feel like you're sat in your front room. So either or, that's, that's what we're trying to aim. What Omnichannel brings is a raft of IT and digital pieces that you need to pull in. Um, and for us, that's the problem because we are archaic as a business, <laughs> so our IT is shocking. Um, so for us, that was a massive issue. Um, yeah, so we kind of, our first slide of our awards presentation was really taking them back to what they'd already known and kind of then starting the journey again with them. Ooh. Again, a little timeline. So obviously, we, we started with Zingo, which is our communication app. That's the first phase of what we did. Then COVID hit. And then our Buzz Learning platform landed, and that's what this, this award was about, was about how we implemented that. You've got a raft of stuff that happened alongside that is we don't do things by half. So one of the things we did was basically go, yes, let's shut 91 clubs, furlough everybody bar, 50 people in the business, and have two of us working in HR and R&D in London new LMS systems. That sounds like fun. That's what we basically did which was joyful. Um, so we did something called Project Revise. So that was about reopening our doors. So as part of also the landing the new LMS system, we then decided to do that as well. Um, so I think that helped with the submission because it became a much bigger project than just normally would be. Um, B of the bang. Well, no, oh, sorry. So one thing that um, you, you talk about um, your staff, you call mm -hmm. them colleagues. colleagues. Um, but when, it, when everybody got furloughed bar the core, uh, a lot of people didn't come back, did they? So no. you ended up with new people coming yeah, into yeah, the yeah. business as well. Yeah, so quite a lot of people decided that they actually quite liked not working or they wanted not to work weekends because bingo is really unsociable, even though it's a really sociable job, it's really unsociable because you have to work weekends. Um, and evenings and late nights and early mornings, etc. Um, so yeah, so we had a hell of a lot of people turning, turning over as well, which meant that we had a workforce that needed to be remobilized, reskilled, upskilled, reminded what they used to do every day that they'd forgotten for six months and bring them back and then also do the thing that everyone loves the most, which is change. Oh, and we've also changed all this for you. So happy days. So yeah. Sorry, one more thing. Yeah, go for it. I need there's a lag on this. Um, <laughs> the other thing that we realised when we were helping to convert the existing learning to e-learning, mm. individual employees didn't have their own email addresses. So there would maybe be, was it one or two in a club or? Not even, one. But, one. So the Zingo app then became really important because that could land on individuals' phones and they could just get stuff, you know, the touch of a button. Yeah, so, so Joan's right, we had, as I said earlier, our IT is archaic, so basically we'd have one GM laptop, well tablet, um, or laptop or desktop, whatever it was, for up to 40, 40 colleagues in a club, and when we'd land a new e-learning package, we'd wonder why it'd take about eight weeks for it to get done, because literally you had to book in a slot <laughs> over so many weeks to get done, so yeah, it was uh, lots of fun, um, and we didn't have, we don't keep any email addresses for our colleagues and not all colleagues have emails in in our business so if you work in a support function you do if you are a gm you do and a club has a generic one and that's it so that also gave us another raft of, of issues we have um, because one thing that we didn't want to do was start getting people using their own equipment to actually do this learning so there's lots of complexities that we've probably done ourselves no favors to actually land in and launch in this um, B of the bang was our reopening training, so that was our retail officer's favourite saying. 
um, then Buzz Learning Testing, and then Buzz Learning. So Buzz Learning is our learning hub. So as a, as a, as a business, we are quite, um, we like to put the word buzz in front of everything, basically. Um, so Buzz Learning is our learning platform, um, which is fun. So phase one was all about getting that engagement, being a, be, having a voice to your colleagues. Um, and this allowed us to do it. So Zingo launched. Um, Zingo actually launched the summer before COVID and it's a godsend that it did because what we realised was that up until that point, what our managers did a lot of was field a lot of L&D issues um, and, and kind of hide a lot of skills that were required by our colleagues. So for example, we have a raft of colleagues from 18 to 68, I think is the oldest colleague in our business. And you'll probably find that in clubs, you've probably got three, four, even five generations. So you might have grandma, mum, daughter, and daughter's daughter within a club who will work and have worked for a few years. Uh, 30 years service, 35 years service is not unusual at Buzz. Um, that's just, the, that's quite the norm. Um, and within that, you have varying levels of ability when it comes to IT, whether that is because they don't have the skill, know they have the skill, or they're scared of it and they're not confident. Um, so that also brought another level of complexity because for us, our GMs used to be the people who used to support and help on a daily basis. Our GMs were also sat at home as well as our colleagues. So all of a sudden there's a gap there and we needed to be able to deploy in a digital way, knowing that our colleagues were going to struggle to download an app to follow a QR code, to lots of pieces. So there was lots of up pieces that we need to do before. Um, and then this is, this is the piece, so this is the migrating. So we secured sign off, we got the system during um, COVID, which was great. And then you'd got levels of the normal team that would be there, that weren't there. So for example, if, you, if I take HR, for example, you would normally have a raft of people working within the HR function on the data feed, on the payroll implementation, etc., all the way through to the launch of it, the communication of it, to the project, to the land in it. Those people just were not in the business. So therefore, the only, there was three of us who were in HR, the team of over 26, there were three people who weren't furloughed. Myself, the internal comms manager and the HR director, and that's it. So this is a people project that we were trying to land in the business with three of us when we were also trying to sort out, for example, furlough payments, furlough trackers, all this kind of stuff as well. So it that was also, I think, a piece that shone out was the level and the depth of what we did with the resource that we had, which was tiny, to be fair. Um, hence, Joan and Michael, who helped us. Hmm? No. Uh, yeah, you are. There you go. Yeah. So... I was brought in, um, I think, through Karen, the head of HR at the time, yeah. uh, to help and realised that there was a lot of existing material there, but it was mostly PDFs and paper checklists and things mm -hmm. like that. So none of that was going to work on this new um, updated LMS. Um, I do learning design and consultancy, but I don't do build. So I approached Michael, who was at Think Biscuit, which has now become Mint. Uh, learning, mint, um, yeah, mint, mint interactive yeah. learning. Um, so we had a little team of about, I think, three or four of us with me helping to work out the content and the strategy or whatever, then handing over to the build team. And Michael and Rosie, yeah. his, his main designer developer, were turning out, well, first of all, the templates in Evolve, uh, which reflect this zany, zany look and feel. Uh, and then basically it was like a production line, wasn't it? The courses were coming out one after the other. Um, but also with good engagement from the people in the business. Sorry, Tony, we keep using that word engagement. Same engagement, I'm engaging, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so there was, there was quite a mountain of pieces that we had to do. Um, I think 50 e-learning modules or pieces of learning and that wraps from PDFs, uh, videos, whatever, e-learning packages, um, we had to move because the platform prior was obviously not mobile responsive and therefore if, you, if you're trying to put in some kind of e-learning that's not mobile responsive into a mobile platform, if you don't do it the right way, it's just horrific for a learner experience. So 
that all needed to be moved. It needed to be updated. Some of it got merged together. We had COVID packages of this, that, and the other yeah, that needed to be put kept in. changing because there was more stuff coming through, and then stuff we'd already delivered would come back and need updating again because of COVID or yeah. something else. But yeah. Michael's team were very responsive. Yeah, because literally we were finding out new requirements that we need that would need to be trained um, the week before they were due to go in. So it was very, very fast paced. Um, luckily enough, Buzz is quite a fast paced business and Jane and Michael kind of got on the treadmill and stayed on it with us, which was fun. Um, Mark Hobbs on the left is the person who supports us with the Zingo app, um, which is obviously our communication app. It's a bit like a Facebook in essence, a Facebook for work, um, which you can brand yourself. Uh, LMS platform is actually embedded into it. So you go, you single sign on into it, and then basically there's a quick link that takes you into Calidus. So it's all integrated. We would then launch content onto our Zingo app for our colleagues to talk directly to them to then, then just follow that journey in. So that also helped and took away a lot of the issues that we had where people would be struggling to what, what's a URL because they don't know what a URL is, they just go to Google, not realising that Google's a URL and it's right, but that's not how they know it. So for us to start saying, click on this URL, it starts to confuse. Uh, why was it successful? So obviously we've talked about mobile responses and the fact that we need to deploy the amount of learning that we needed to. It was ever changing as well and there was pieces within it, which also, if you are deploying in a way where we had traditionally deployed, which would have been face-to-face, -face. we might have deployed through GM's meetings, which were once a month. We might have gone into club and done a set training session in club on a set day where people had come in. We weren't able to do any of that with COVID issues. So therefore, we had to be responsive and quick and able to change at any point and obviously let colleagues know that this could change at any point and if it did, what's it changed to? Um, Make colleagues felt that they owned it. So as part, of, as part of this, we had working groups. We talked to our colleagues from cleaners all the way up to GMs, to regional managers, to regional directors. We got them all involved in this. When they were working, sat at home, we asked them surveys. What would you like to see? What would you least like to see? What's your favorite color that you would like to see? What, how can we make this easier for you? We were asking them questions because A, we wanted to know, but B, we also wanted to keep talking to them so they didn't feel they were on their own because this was a really tough period for a lot of people. Um, and if you're sat at home disengaged, we need you to be engaged when you come back to work. That's, that's a massive head shift that you've got to go from. So by getting you involved in the project, A, you feel ownership of it, but B, you're actually, we're actually getting you to that point where you're feeling you want to come back to work, you're excited about what you're going to do when you come back to work. Um, Share best practice, yeah. So within the system, it allows you to give kudos, give notifications, um, share best practice. The Zingo app allows you to talk between. So you might may well be a cleaner in Aberdeen who's then talking to a session manager in Plymouth. That in normal world, you're not going to meet each other. But all of a sudden, you're now talking to each other. And you're having those great conversations and sharing a bit of practice. Um, there's also club and regional walls. So this, the platform allowed you to um, talk as a club, but also talk as a region and a sub-region. So our regions are north, central and south. And between them, there's 30 clubs in each region. So you have a north one and north two. So north one do everything together, north two do everything together. So they don't normally cross over in, in normal day-to-day -day worlds. So to get them to be able to cross over and come together as a wider region and then also as a wider business was, was really positive as well. Um, and you can give feedback in the system as well. They can feed back to us. What do they like? What they don't they like? They can give. They can rate our e-learning platform and our, our packages with stars. They can actually give us detailed feedback as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can I just say that I think what you're describing was part of your culture anyway, but having the technology underpinning it allowed that to be rolled out and more conversations to be had. Mm. So I think people engaged with it because. They were used to being able to talk uh, to the business and have the business talk to them. So it was about taking that culture and, and widening it with the use of the technology. Yeah. Um, this is looking at the 
pl the app platform that supported the learner management system. Um, so like you see, naming competitions to launch the app, club social rules, launch of the app and how to do it. So our app was not mandatory as a business, it was optional, but we managed to get 92% of our business to sign up to it. Um, because if we'd have made it mandatory, you then therefore are putting a barrier straight away for some people because they don't like to be told to do something. So for us to get 92% was, was huge. And the 8% that we didn't get, we would always, if we posted anything on Zingo, we would follow it up with either posters, um, it would be within something called Buzzbeats, I told your buzz follows through. So Buzzbeats is, is a newsletter that lands in club. So there's a digital version of it that sits on Zingo once a quarter, but there's also an actual paper that lands into club and everyone's home address as well. So we would make sure that anyone that wasn't on didn't miss a message. What they would have missed is the community piece that's driven between people on the sites. Um, and then sharing lockdown community work as well. So our business is very caring. Um, they're extremely, they feel as if they're part of the community, um, which is massive. For, to, for example, during lockdown, people were, um, I think someone brought a 3D printer and started making masks. Um, people were donating stock from clubs because obviously there was lots of stock in clubs that was I'd got a sell by date it was being donated to food banks to charities etc all that stuff was shared through through this site so that everyone in the business could see what everyone was doing and then there's a video here which shows you a little bit about Zingo so you get a, you get a gist of the of the platform that feeds into the LMS so if I press play you'll get some audio <laughs> That just gives you a bit of an example of the platform that leads you onto the LMS. So without that, we wouldn't have been able to land a new LMS system, especially not uh, a digital-based one, into our business at the point. So that was our kind of feeder, if that makes sense. Uh, and then Zynga has also won quite a lot of awards. Um, and these are, so staff base are, are the people who um, own, for example, the platform, and we've just purchased it and called it um, Zingo. So their internal awards, we won, some, we won an award for the way that we've communicated. Uh, and then what's next? So one of the pieces that's next for Zingo is journeys. And actually this, so our onboarding journeys through our LMS platform has allowed us to pull in um, competency checks. So that's allowed us actually to use this platform as 90 days, so a new colleague that starts in our business, and um, we're able to talk to them for 90 days via Zingo and direct them to everything that they need to complete when, by why, how, etc. when it comes to on our LMS system. So that's a massive piece for us because we've never been able to do that as a business. Um, we've never been able to track and make sure that our colleagues who are on a 13-week induction and onboarding programme actually hit every single marker at the right time. What we've been able to do is track it at the end of that period, if that makes sense, and look back and go, oh, they did meet it or they didn't meet it, and why didn't they meet it? Whereas actually this allows us to track it in the moment, and we're able to give them pointers, tips, reminders, help. So I think this will show what that looks like. <laughs>
begin the buzz, which is your first seven days in the business. And as part of that, you have to complete certain packages of e-learning, certain bits of knowledge transfer, and that basically walks you through that. So it, should, it shouldn't replace your manager, it should complement what your manager is getting you to do in club, in essence, it's that journey. Um, so this is about buzz learning. So, so we've talked about certification, we've talked about feedback, um, and what it will start to do is this, is this is how we feel that we did a great job, if that makes sense. So alongside Joan and Michael, we built a brand and a template. So we wanted everyone to see and know when, it, when something was coming out from us as a business, whether it was external or internal, it had our look, feel, our voice, our tone of voice, our community. So they, they firstly, there was no barriers because we have in the past, taken it off the shelf and dropped it into our business and it has not worked because it's, it's not aimed at our colleagues. Our colleagues go, that's not real, that's not us, we're not taking any advantage or notice of that. We moved the design software to mobile responsive, so we used to use Articulate, um, which was quite, well, it's quite static, um, and we moved to Evolve, which we found a great tool, it was really, really responsive. Um, what do you think of Evolve? Um, the thing about Evolve is it looks more like a web page and you scroll down it, um, you, you're not clicking you know, side to side and it had a lot of flexibility and we did lots of short modules, so maybe five minutes, maybe ten max and there was also quite a lot of space for reflective text, we were trying to get people to reflect on things that they would take away with them, so we also had the option for them to fill in a number of text boxes and then save that, and print it out or save it at the end. Um, so, and all the while keeping the same look and feel uh, and answering specific you know, business objectives. Yeah, so like for us it was a massive piece to be able to have a template and a brand. Any images and any usage that you did in Evolve, you could click and pull in really easily, um, which again was great. Um, as I said earlier, we were, a, we were a small team, there's three of us, um, and we cover 3,000 colleagues, 91 clubs and every single piece of L&D that you would expect a business of that size to do. So um, attraction, onboarding, day one, 13 week probation, um, all your policies, um, all your management development programmes, coaching, all your basic core skills, um, competency checks, trackers, apprenticeships, it's all done in house. Um, so we're a small team, quite responsive, but we were never gonna be able to do this project on our own. Um, so we had to upskill ourselves as well, um, which, was, which we did through Michael. So Michael supported us and Joan supported us because they'd used Evolve before. So they, in essence, became, I suppose, the super users and trained us to be able to use it, which was good. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we got across in our presentation was, was how important it was to talk to our colleagues and get our colleagues part of this. It was not, they were not talked at it was talked with, um, they were on every step of the journey with us um, and everything that they thought they would need, they got and more and that, that came through. Um, it was massive, the testing piece was also quite big. So um, like I said, we have archaic IT. So for example, we have servers in our head office support which support our head office and our retail staff but then once you go into a club, all of our clubs have different levels of tech um, and they're all on their own server because obviously, I don't know whether anyone's ever been into a bingo club, but there is a lot of stuff you have to do electrically wise. It's not even a word, with electric, basically, um, to get the lights, to get the screens, to get the bingo machines, then when you link up to live games. So if you link up to the live, that's not only 91 clubs in Buzz Bingo, that's Mecca's 60 clubs and someone else's 10 clubs and whatever, all coming onto a platform to then do bingo across all of them clubs at the same time. So there's a lot of Wi-Fi, internet, lots of stuff I don't understand around IT, which is just horrific. Um, for me. Um, so there's a lot of testing that we had to make sure that our club in Nottingham Top Valley and our club in Great Park in Birmingham could use the system and wouldn't get it A, blocked, firewalls, whatever else it used to, 404 errors and everything else. Um, 
So that was massive as well. And obviously, we couldn't go around to every club. So as part of that, the engagement with the club managers who were going in to check the clubs on a daily basis was to get them to do testing with us. So we had to pull a raft of 91 people together to have representatives in every club to be tested at certain points. Can you get on the system at this point? Switch this on, can you still get on the system? So it was, it was a massive job. Uh, and this is going to give you a quick look of the system so you can get an understanding of what our Buzz Learning platform looks like. Hello and welcome to Learn. We've been working hard in the background to bring you a new learning system that supports content being accessed on a smartphone as well as on a PC or laptop. We know the previous classic system was limited in its functionality, so we've made the commitment to change for the better. In this short video, we will be taking you through what the new system looks like and how you're going to use it. So, let's take a look at Learn. Firstly, to access the system, use this web address. You'll be taken to the login page where you will need to use your six digit payroll number as your username, and remember to add double or triple zero to the front of a three or four digit payroll number. Your password will be learning all in lowercase, unless you've already changed it. Remember, the forgotten password link doesn't work because we can't store your personal email addresses in our systems. To get your password reset, please contact buzzbingo at service-now.com who will be able to support. Let's practice logging in. Enter your username, then your password, and select login. Now you'll see the landing page, which uses a clean and simple layout. You'll be able to see a dashboard that shows you the courses you need to do, your completion percentage, and how many hours of learning you've done in the last 12 months. There's a notification bell at the top of the screen. This is where you'll be able to see if there's anything new that needs your attention. Once you're in, you can personalise your account with a photo, remembering it's visible to all other users in the system, so please keep it appropriate. Click on Upload Your Picture, Select an image, and save. Easy. If you select My Courses, you'll be able to see it's now split into three sections. Courses I have to do shows you what you need to do first. It'll either show a status of not started or in progress. You can also see what type of material it contains, like e-learning or a PDF document, and how long it's likely to take to complete. Lots of badges, by the way. By clicking the Continue Course button, it opens the course card. From here, you can see all the lessons attached to that course and what status they are at. You can see from the green tick here that some are completed. Courses I've chosen to do shows you what you can also do if you would like to improve yourself, but are not required to do as part of your mandatory training. Courses I've done shows you what you've completed. Notice the green triangle on the course card title. Now that you're familiar with how to log in to learn and navigate around, let's take a look at some of the finer points of the system you need to know. The first thing to note is that there are different types of content contained within courses. Here we can see an example. This course is comprised of e-learning, denoted by this computer symbol. But it also contains documents, usually PDF, denoted by this symbol. To launch a document, click here. To launch e-learning, click here. Let's take a closer look at how to complete an e-learning course. Our e-learning courses are fully interactive and require you to follow a logical learning path through them. On the menu screen, you'll notice that there are often multiple modules, some of which are locked until you've completed the previous one. You'll see each one has a percentage completion amount too. When you access a module, you'll need to complete interactions along the way in order to progress. You can check which ones you need to complete by clicking here at the top right of the screen. Once you've completed everything on a page, the next module will become available and you can navigate using these buttons at the bottom of the page. If you need to get back to the menu at any time, you can use this button here at the top left of the screen. If at any point you need to exit a course before it's completed, the system will remember your progress. 
When you log back in, you'll see this message asking if you want to continue from where you left off. If you want to restart a previously completed course, such as this one, you'll see this message on the screen appear before you decide whether or not to restart. Or you can just review the course, which will preserve its completed status. Once you've completed a few courses, it'll all be second nature. If you want a quick reminder of all your mandatory e-learning, or come across a term in your e-learning package that you don't understand, don't worry. We've compiled an area in Learn where you can refresh your memory and get up to speed with everything you need to know about your Buzz Learning courses. Just type Buzz Learning in the search bar at the top, then navigate to this area where you will find your Bingo Jargon Buster, a quick lesson on Buzz language and abbreviations. Your e-learning refresher guide, a reminder of all the mandatory courses you may need a refresher on. And finally, we've created a fun bingo game to help you keep on track of your progress and achieve full house. Just cross off your completed courses or any ones which don't apply to you as you go. And that's it. Remember, if you get really stuck or have a question, you can drop an email to lnd at buzzbingo.com for all things buzz learning related. Except for password resets, as these are done by the service desk. You need to email buzzbingo at service-now.com for password resets. So it's very straightforward, but that's what your audience needed. Yeah, definitely. And there's some stuff in there which is not groundbreaking, but we never had it as a business. Um, so the pieces that you then start to build on top of that to get, that, I think that was the piece that stood out was the level of the change that we did as a business, because um, we were very archaic, very behind the times. And to move from that to what a lot of other businesses are probably doing and have been doing for years um, was just such a big change for us and such a big piece for us to do. So I think that's, that really stood out. Um, this, is, this is other pieces. So for example, we were able with the new system to be able to use bite-sized learning. So we did a raft of bite-sized videos for ourselves, but what we also did is spoke to a third party company called MICRO and um, they have a catalogue of 700 30 second to one minute videos down to, for example, Excel. So I hate Excel, Excel is not my friend, um, but they have videos that's 30 seconds that literally shows you how to do something. Um, and we have those for a raft of pieces, so PowerPoint, Word, Excel, Outlook. And then we also had mental health, uh, communication, setting goals, etc., etc. So there's a raft of 700 catalogues catalogue videos across and we were able to deploy them via our system and via um, Thingo to communicate to colleagues with, for example, we've got 13,727 views of those so far in our business. 267 of the 300 that we've put into our business have been viewed and this was last September and um, 278 videos have been watched in that month up until when I was presenting this to the Learning Tech for the award submission. Um, so that kind of piece and interactivity and that kind of stuff is amazing for us. Um, and that just shows how we launched it. Zingo fed into um, Learn and how they complemented each other and without one we couldn't have done the other. Um, I'll skip over that one um, because we've only got five minutes left and that's quite a chunky video. <laughs> um, and basically this is another piece. So for us, um, prior to this, our completion rates on our e-learning platform was not great. Who's going to sit there and use a PowerPoint that's been put into a system and think that's engaging? It's not really. Very frustrating. Um, but now, in the first three months of Learn going live, I think we had 90% completion across every mandatory package that someone had to do. Um, and the amount of clubs that were at 100% completion for every colleague in their club was massive. So the, we we're obviously doing something right, which is really ticked into that engagement piece of our colleagues. Um, we also then find, found out that um, we do something called Buzzometer Survey. 
um, which is basically your shout, your view, whatever you want to call it. It's our colleagues' opinion of what we do good in our business. So 84% of them understood how, how they contributed to the goals of the company, which was part of the e-learning programmes that they were doing, and 83% of them felt safe, and part of that was because they had done their mandatory training and they knew exactly what they should be doing, when and how. Um, so they were, they were quite good statistics. Thank you so much for this bingo.